If the blessing of Wilkemon, the first and only commit of Iowa's 2021 recruiting class, Payne Sanford, how are you doing, man? Doing good. Um, finally good to get that off my shoulders and good to be with you here today. Absolutely, man. Well, take us through this process. I mean, you're committed now. You're officially a member of Iowa. What's going through your mind? What's it like to be committed? Yeah, um, growing up in the state, um, I think it's it's a huge honor to be um, in that class, being able to represent um, my home state, the Hawkeyes, and just kind of um, hopefully take them to new heights. And uh, I can't be, wait to be a Hawkeye, pretty much. I was not necessarily known as an elite powerhouse basketball school, but right now they're projected to be a school that's going to be in the running to possibly win a championship, headed by Luca Garza, obviously. Just seeing this momentum, though, what he's been able to accomplish there, how much more appealing does that make Iowa to you? Yeah, I mean, right now I think it's super appealing because um, over the last five or so years they've been really on the upswing, and now you're everybody's starting to see that um, they're going to be competing for championships to go to the Final Four, stuff like that. So it's super appealing to get recruited by that top five team right now. No doubt. Let's get into this recruiting process. You have offers from all over the place. You're looking at some schools like Drake, Utah, Stanford, Minnesota. Who really was in the true running for you? Yeah, um, I think those five that you just mentioned were probably the main five. Um, I had a couple other offers from Air Force and Loyola, but um, I hadn't really talked to them in a long time anyways. But um, over once the quarantine started, I kind of got it down to um, the four and then Stanford offered during that period. So I added them in there um, and each had their own appeal. But um, ultimately, I think it's just it's a big honor to be able to stay home and play for that home state school and um, I think I'm a perfect fit for the system and the culture. So I think it'll be a great fit once I get there. Now, leading up to the point that you finally realized I was where I want to go, was there a school you're kind of battling with? Was there a number two option or maybe two or three guys that were they right them? Yeah, um, I would say over the past couple months, I got it down. I kind of eliminated Minnesota a little bit and then had it really down. I was talking about all the time to Drake, Stanford, um, and Utah. So um, like I said, each had their own appeal. Um, I was big fans of all those staffs, obviously big fans of the Drake staff um, being so close to home. But um, I just kind of just kind of weighed all my options and kept talking to him. And then ultimately I came to my decision and um, went with that for a while before I actually released it. Now you have a dynamic duo. We're talking about high school in a little bit, but you guys both, you and Tucker both commit within a week of each other. And he's going to Drake now. As we also know his dad also is the head coach out there. What would that have been like playing with your dynamic duo now, continuing that relationship and also playing for a guy that's been in your life, Coach DeBerry's? Yeah, um, I think that would have been really cool. Um, obviously, we know each other's games like the back of our hands. So um, getting to play with him would have been really sweet. I think ultimately it just came down to um, just being in Iowa. Everybody's a Hawkeye fan. So I was getting pressure from my family and everything like that to, to go there. So ultimately I went there, but um, I love Darren's system. And um, I think me and Tucker would have been a really good fit together. Like we already are in high school. Because of COVID, it wasn't the typical recruiting year for you going on a lot of this. You did get one in though, going out to Utah. What was that experience like getting out there and going on campus? Yeah. Um, so that was my only official visit. And um, I thought it was really, really cool. Um, that was a great city. Um, really loved that coaching staff. Loved a lot of the players. I got to sit down with them and just hang out with them for a while, which was really cool. And then um, just being able to see them. They had like their close scrimmage when I was there, and seeing how they play, everything like that. Um, I thought it was a good fit. I think ultimately it just came down to um, it was just a ways away from home and kind of wanted to stay closer. If COVID ever came into effect, would schools like Stanford, Utah schools away from home, been more appealing to you potentially um I think there's always that chance um being able to go out on a visits may have made things different but um probably not I've had my heart set in Iowa for a while so um just really excited to be a Hawkeye and um I guess it changed maybe a couple things maybe not be able to see the campus but not a whole lot mm -hmm. now when you were already battling the schools I mean we just mentioned go to Utah you see the practice wasn't as advanced as the school since you couldn't go on campus, but just kind of looking at each school, talking to coaches, what were the key pieces you were looking for in college? What were the questions you wanted to know from coaches? And what was all that kind of detail you wanted to have in college? 
Yeah, um, I think the biggest thing I was looking for was just kind of finding that family environment and then um, finding a place where they have like a good, where they had a good education program for what I want to do when I grow up. Um, so I think um, a, a bunch of the schools I had really had that tight knit family and things like that. And then um, a couple other things I had were just where uh, my play style kind of fit really well and where I'd have a chance to just kind of do what I already do at the high school level and translate that to college. You mentioned the education aspect. What are the kind of degrees you're looking at? What do you want to do after basketball? Yeah, um, I'm looking to um, maybe go into like sports broadcasting, work for like Big Ten Network or ESPN, something like that, um, or go into business. I have it kind of narrowed down to those two things. That's awesome. Let's give one as Iowa commitment. Chris McCaffrey's done an incredible job, mostly at developing guys. So I was not as successful at lands five-star players. A lot of guys, he gets out there and develops them into becoming potential pros or elite college players. What's it like seeing that? Yeah, um, I think that's a really, really big piece because um, a lot of the guys he brings in are guys just like me, like um, kind of under the radar from close to home. And then he just develops them into monsters over, over those four years. So I think that was a big part of it because – um, knowing what he can do just kind of with guys like me and make them way better, make everybody, make them be able to compete with anybody in the country is, is a really big thing. We don't always get to see a coach, what he's like at home, off the court. We see him, what he does on the court as a coach. But you're talking to him, just, what's his personality like? What's it just on a day-to-day life? Yeah, I think he's a super, super cool guy. And the whole coaching staff is, um, when you watch him on TV, you just kind of think of him as a hothead a little bit. He's he, he loves fighting for his players, which is another really cool thing. But um, he cracks a lot of jokes. Um, he loves to talk. And um, I really enjoy getting to know him. I think he's a great guy. The first time you start getting in contact with Iowa, what was that experience like? Yeah, um, the first time they called me, they actually offered because that was the first time they'd ever seen me play. And um, I think it was just like at first it was a little shocking because that was my first offer. And I'd, I'd been working for it my whole life. So when that finally came in, that was – um, super, super rewarding. Um, and I didn't expect to get offered on that first call, but it was pretty cool. And then ever since then, we've had a great relationship. And um, Coach McCaffrey's called me like once or twice a week ever since then. Would you say you guys kind of clicked right at first time talking or how did he kind of ease himself in the past year? Yeah, um, I think starting out, it was just like a really casual relationship. Um, he wanted me to come catch a game or um, he would come down and catch one of our high school games. And um, he just cracked jokes, tell stories. And then um, over this period, he got a little more serious and tell me why, or uh, was telling me why he wanted me to come play for him and um, how I'd fit in really well with the system and stuff like that. And then um, once I committed, I think um, they were all super excited. Take us to a Zoom call when you first told them that you're going to be going there, they become a member of Iowa. Yeah. Um, I just kind of explained to him, like, I told him, remember when, um, you told me you wanted me to come play for you. Well, I want to come play for you. And um, I had my family on the Zoom call, and they had the whole coaching staff, and um, everybody was just super excited, um, throwing their hands in there and stuff. So it was just a really cool and rewarding moment for all I've worked for. What does he want from you now? You have a year to get on campus. What does he want you working on? What's his expectations for you in your freshman season? Yeah, um, the first thing he told me was just to go win a state championship in high school. And then um, really once I get onto campus, they'll start really working with me and um, getting me like stronger, quicker, stuff like that. But they just want me to keep really doing what I'm doing and then um, mentally just start preparing to be able to maybe contribute big minutes my freshman year. This is Luke Garza's final season in college basketball. It's going to be a big loss for you guys. It's going to obviously be a guy that fills almost all the stat categories for you, the face of the team. How, when you get out there, do you guys plan as a team to fill his shoes and be able to still produce at a high level? Yeah, um, I think Coach McCaffrey's track record shows that um, he's been able to produce year in and year out when he's been not only at Iowa, but other schools um, getting into the tournament. So um, I'm sure when I get there, we'll have to, I mean, I guess they're going to have to change the style a little bit without that, maybe that big presence inside. But um, I think it's still going to be a lot of just um, tough Iowa basketball and um, the, the system that works really. How about by the time you're a senior? What does he want you as one of the players? Is there a comparison he gives you? Who's he kind of see you panning out to be like by the time you're a senior? 
Yeah, um, he's made comparisons to like Aaron White, Jared Utah, Joe Wieskamp, those types of guys. But um, really, I guess it, it all depends on how hard I'm, I'm going to work and um, what I'm going to produce once I get up there. And I like asking this question to you guys do commit, but growing up, were you an Iowa fan? Who kind of was your team growing up? Yeah, um, for college basketball, I just kind of varied on whoever, whoever was good from the state. Um, I was an Iowa fan for a period. Um, my dad's from Nebraska, so I was a Nebraska fan for a while. And then um, these last couple of years, I've just been watching a lot of the teams that have offered or have shown interest in me and just kind of followed them to see how I'd fit in. Absolutely. Well, you'll be playing the Big Ten. It's a big time conference. How excited will you be a part of that? Yeah, um, I'm super excited. I've been working my whole life to be able to be challenged at this level and kind of show what I've got on this national stage. And um, I think I'm a good fit for the conference and I'm excited to see what we can do. And hopefully we get a conference title or two. So you're the first and only commit right now. Who else are you targeting? Who else would you like to bring alongside you to join you in 2021? Um, I think for this class, we might actually, that might be it. Cause they, they don't know how the, they only have one or two scholarships available for the class yet. They're not sure. Depends on if Wies camp goes pro. So I think right now they're holding tight, but, um, if they need me to go recruit somebody, I'll go find somebody. Bow down. 2020 is a special class. They have a lot of players coming in there. Do you know any of those guys? What's your relationship with them? If you do know them. Yeah, um, I don't really know any of them personally. Um, I met Josh and Gundale. We both visited on the same weekend. So um, I connected with him a little bit um, and then connected once I committed. But um, I played against the Murray Twins in high school a little bit. And then um, Perkins and Ulyss, um, I haven't – I've seen a couple of their highlights, but um, I'm sure it'll be a good fit once I get up there. Absolutely. Let's get into this high school season. You're in Iowa, and it's not necessarily known as – one of the best basketball states in this country, but you guys put a roster now together of four guys that are ranked, four guys that are going to be Division One players. How excited are you for this upcoming season? Yeah, um, I'm super excited just to be able to show what we can do. Um, last year, we kind of flew under the radar a little bit and then came out and um, played really well for a long time before um, things got weird on that final night. But um, I think I'm just really excited to show what we've got, show what the state of Iowa has, because it's like you said, it's it's not very well known um, who's in the state, but um, I think it's going to be a fun year. And um, if we play together, it should be really hard to stop us. 24 and three record last year. You guys all get one more year of experience, plus the addition of Omaha Baloo, a top five player in the country. What's the expectations for you guys this upcoming season? Yeah, I think um, for us, the sky's the limit. We got a couple out of state games where we can, I think that's where we can make some noise nationally. And then, um, we're still trying to get that first state title in school history. So um, this last year before our school splits. So um, hopefully we can just play together and keep to ourselves and just show people what we can do. You and Tucker form this dynamic duo now. It's continuing to thrive. In 2023 now, as your little brother will talk about more in a second, but Price and Omaha, what do you expect for that duo now to do going forward? Yeah, um, so our high school is splitting after this year because it's gotten so big into two high schools. And I think they're going to stay together, but I'm not 100% sure where Omaha's going yet. Mm -hmm. But I think um, they compete really well with each other right now in open gyms. Um, and they're both just kind of their own animal. And But together, I think they can be something really scary in a couple of years once they get that experience of their, their belt of playing together. You averaged nearly 20 points a game last year, nine rebounds, four assists. What are you capable of averaging next season? Um, I think maybe something similar, maybe more. Um, but honestly, I'm just trying to do whatever I can to help us get that state title under our belt. And um, whatever, wherever those shots come from, wherever those rebounds come from, um, whatever the, wherever the fall, uh, chips fall, I'm, whatever we can do to win. You are known about and everyone talks about you as an elite three-point shooter. That's going to primarily be the role for you at Iowa, but – at school right now, you're currently running the point guard a lot. How will that help you now when you get to college? Yeah, um, I've talked to Coach McCaffrey about a lot. Um, he says he really doesn't see my role changing a whole lot from what it is right now. Just kind of if I get a rebound, be able to bring it up, um, run in transition where um, point guard could find me, things like that. Um, I think it'll be – it's really important how my role kind of changed last year to being able to do all that so that I can kind of – 
um, get ready for that experience down the road in college. You being an elite three-point shooter, above 45% now, how have you learned to get that? I know it's obviously a lot of skill, but everyone knows shooting is a lot of confidence as well. How have you maintained that confidence to become such an elite shooter? Yeah, um, I think I've been I've been training um, my shot and my mind for um, as long as I can remember with my dad and my grandpa. So um, even last year, I started out pretty rough, like not great numbers before Christmas, but um, just keeping that, that mentality of just keep shooting it because they're going to start going in with my shot how consistent it is and then once I really get hot that's when I can get going and put up some big numbers shooters go in streaks sometimes where you don't make a lot you mentioned before Christmas that kind of was your case how do you bounce out of that how do you adjust to that midseason yeah I think you just gotta you just gotta keep shooting keep the confidence high um you're not gonna make it if you don't shoot it so um if you get an open look don't hesitate just let it fire and um they'll start falling that's that's where I'm at yeah now let's discuss family a little bit. Your little brother, I mentioned Price, he made the top 50. Seeing mm-hmm. that, just seeing the way he's developed and how you kind of helped develop him into who he is now, what's like seeing his growth? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm super excited for him. I think he's, he's worked really hard. Um, we've worked really hard together just to kind of get to this point where we can play together in high school and hopefully win a state title. So um, he's always the, the toughest kid on the court and he always makes big plays and he doesn't really fear anything. So um watching him just kind of do his thing super rewarding for me as a big brother he's not heading into the sophomore campaign would you say he's better or the equal worse compared to you when you're heading into your sophomore season yeah um heading into my sophomore season I really hadn't played many varsity minutes yet um just a couple and um he's already averaged 10 points uh, a game as a, as a freshman um and he has super high expectations, and I think he's a lot more confident than I was heading into that sophomore season. So I'm excited to see what he can do and how he can jump this year. That's awesome. Now you take a step back and just think of him. What's the first memory that comes to your mind, both on or off the court? <laughs> um, I don't know. Probably um, the first day before we before we moved houses, we we were putting in our. Um, our basketball goal and we were probably three or four years old and right away we were outside shooting at, it was on like six foot or something but and uh playing one-on-one even though I was like double his size but that's what it was I can imagine you still play some one-on-one games here and there how do the games go yeah um just kind of the same it always ends in a fight or somebody's real real mad with the other for something they did but um, I think the games just keep getting more high level throughout the years. And the more we push each other, the better we each get. The time will come eventually that his recruiting process will start heavily picking up. If something set up where I was interested in him, would that be something you'd want to recruit him to? And what would it be like playing with him in college potentially? Yeah, um, just kind of the same thing as now. I'm, I think it'd be super awesome to play with him. Um, but I'm not going to push him one way or the other, wherever he wants to go. This is his decision. And um Hopefully he ends up in Iowa and we'll have a lot of fun together for a couple of years. Without doubt, man. A few more things before I let you go. I want to discuss your AAU. It wasn't quite the year you guys always want to wrap your AAU career off with, but you got some games in, some events. What was it just kind of getting back in the core and wrapping up your AAU career? Yeah, um, even though the season kind of started a little weird, I think it was super fun getting back out there and getting to play again. Um, even though I think – uh, maybe there weren't as many teams at the tournaments. I think there was still a lot of high level basketball going on and we played a lot of good teams, got some really big wins this year and I had a ton of fun with it. And then seeing some of my teammates get um, offers was super rewarding because I know how hard they've been working too. You look back now at your entire AU career from the time you started last season. What's your first memory, your favorite memories that come to mind throughout your AU career? Yeah. Um, when I was in like second or third grade, I, hit like my first buzzer beater to win a tournament where we played two ages up and that was super cool and we threw it like a big little celebration for it um and then just throughout the years I played on the same team from when I was like five through when I was 14 and then I moved over to Kingdom Hoops and um got really close with all those guys we won some big games um that nobody really thought we could so um I think a is just some of the greatest memories in my life and there's too many, I guess, to just point out a couple. 
when would you say it clicked for you? When did you start realizing that you can become an elite player and not only an t- elite player, but you can get ranked and recruited by power five high major schools? Yeah. Um, I think that's always been my dream. And um, I've always been told that if I worked hard enough, that that would always be a reality. So I think for the longest time, that's what that's been what I've been thinking of and working towards. And um, I guess just as long as I can remember, really. We mentioned Iowa a few times now. It's not a heavily recruited place. You guys don't get the attention that some of you guys deserve. But you've been able to make it out. You've become the player you are now. What's your advice to younger kids trying to rise up and become another guy that can make it out and make it to a high-level stage? Yeah, um, I think just keep working because if you're good enough, they're going to find you. There's so many different events, even though this year was weird. But um, moving forward, there's just so many live events and things like that. So if you can get yourself onto that stage and just – um, play without that fear of messing up and just keep working on your game. Um, good things are going to happen, even if it's not at the Power Five or the Division One level. Um, there's still life changing opportunities out there for everybody if you just work for it and keep grinding. No doubt. Well, I was like wrapping up discussing legacy, and that's something I think all guys want to do. So when you are done playing basketball someday, what do you want your legacy to be? What do you want to be remembered for for what you achieve both on and off the court? Yeah, um, I think the main thing would be just pointing whoever watched me to Christ um, and just showing how really like as much of a big deal it is is to, to play well on the court, just to make more of an impact off the court, um, helping people through what I've been able to accomplish and what I will be able to accomplish and just um, making it more than just about me. That leads me right where I want to wrap up and that's about faith. And you discussed that. I mean, being a light is something that we see some athletes kind of the model ones with Tebow, Jeremy and Lennon's type of guys. How do you maintain that? How do you still stay strong in faith as you continue to grow on platform and get to the college and potentially even pro level someday? Yeah, um, I think just just um, giving all the glory to God through this is the most important thing. So um, growing up, my team was always like sponsored by um, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. So we'd pray before games. Um, we'd kind of make it an emphasis to make sure that your priority is not playing for anybody, but yourself and for God. So um, just continuing to do that. And then um, just showing that um, and trying to lead other people down that path is, is really important. Growing up, especially if you're in a family of believers, it kind of is not necessarily forced on you, but you just grow up knowing faith. It's in kind of in the family. When was that turning point for you though? When did you really start the relationship with you and God and will you have that turning point in your faith? Yeah. Um, so I think it, I've, I've been going to church my whole life, but, um, used to just sit there like with the little coloring books the whole time, not really pay attention, but, um, probably when I got into like, um, youth group, um, through middle school, high school, stuff like that, and being able to connect with people my age and like talk about our experiences. I think that was a huge thing for, um, growing my faith and, um, kind of, then using the sports and seeing all the gifts that God's given me have just kind of kept furthering that. That's awesome, man. Well, I definitely appreciate you taking on the come on today, man. Keep doing your thing. Keep sure. on being the light. Yeah. Thank you. Of course. You're welcome on me. God bless. Yeah. Thanks.